This is the Flux Labs Acoustic FA10. It is one of my favorite headphone amplifiers that I've ever owned. And at 16 watts per channel, it's also one of the most powerful amplifiers that I've ever known. Now, obviously that makes this an incredibly niche amplifier. There are hardly any headphones out there on the market that can actually benefit from what the FA-10 offers. Now, unfortunately, the FA-10 has been discontinued and as heartbreaking as that is for me to admit, there is a light at the end of the tunnel because in a strange turn of events, the successor to the FA-10 is the Mentor. The Mentor is a dual mono Class A amplifier that has replaced the FA-10 in the Flux lineup. How well does it hold up to its smaller yet mighty predecessor? Let's find out. First, let's look at a quick comparison in terms of their size. As you can see, the FA-10 is marginally smaller than the Mentor. So the Mentor is bringing in a little bit of a bigger footprint, but also there are quite a bit more features on the Mentor than you are seeing on the FA-10. The Mentor has an all metal body with a smooth satin finish on the faceplate and the volume knob and a more rough texture on the sheet metal chassis. The Mentor is also a pretty hefty boy at almost 14 pounds. It boasts 11.2 watts per channel at 32 ohms and 1.6 watts per channel at 300 ohms. Now, obviously that's not as powerful as the FA-10, but let's put a pin in that for now because we're gonna be talking more about that later. On the front panel, we have our on and off power switch. Then we have our input selection of single-ended, mono, which we'll come back to, and balanced. Next to that is our gain knob, of which there are three levels, low, medium, and high, which are 14, 20, and 15.3 decibels, respectively. Next is the sensor port for the optional remote control. And then we have our satin metal, super soft, and very, very linear volume knob. Going over to our outputs, we have a combo single-ended quarter-inch and three-pin XLR mono out. We'll talk more about that later. And then, of course, our balanced four-pin XLR. Now let's take a look at the back panel, starting with this strange DVI-looking port. This is what they're calling their link port. We'll talk more about that later. Next to that, we have our single-ended RCA inputs, then a single three-pin XLR input, we'll talk more about that later, then our right and left XLR balanced inputs, followed by our AC in, and then it'll be marked what kind of voltage your unit has. And here's a quick look at the optional remote control, which is a solid piece of CNC aluminum built very, very well. Now let's break her open and take a look inside. Oh boy, the nerdy stuff. And there it is. What a beautiful freaking sight is this look at its splendor wonderfully organized beautiful components we're going to kind of go over this briefly but there's a couple of really cool things to look at in here the mentor is built on a dual mono principle where each channel has its own power supply and transformer each power supply has four individual cde capacitors a neotech upofc ultra pure oxygen free copper cable connects the AC inlet to the power transformers. It is a class A amplifier with JFET transistors at the input and bipolar transistors at the output and a very beefy heat sink that goes underneath the PCB to allow for quicker startups and better thermals. There are Ono microcrystalline copper cables used for the output. Some noteworthy components of the amplifier are Rex and Ray series Techman resistors, Vichet VAR series uncased audio resistors, PRP resistors, and capacitors from CDE, Nichicon, Wima, and Epcos. The volume control is based on a 64-step relay attenuator. The control circuit uses Panasonic fast signal relays. We have a blue velvet series ALPS variable potentiometer, and then over here, we have our sync board for using mono. We'll talk more about that later. Like I said at the beginning of this video, these are very niche amplifiers. They have a tremendous amount of power that very few headphones will ever be able to benefit from. But one headphone that can sure benefit from them is, of course, our beloved 
mod house tungsten. We're going to start talking about sound and how the Mentor compares to the FA-10 and its predecessor. And how I went about doing this is I did run the tungsten on both units. So not only are you getting a kind of general sound comparison between the two, but also specifically how the tungsten sounds between the two. The FA-10 is clean, clear, has a tremendous amount of dynamics, and is very balanced with a slight hint of warmth. The FA-10 is all about power and impact. It's extremely intimate, extremely intense. Everything's very tight and very, very focused with really hard hitting attacks that are super engaging. The low end on the FA-10 is natural, refined, and it has excellent base extension, creating this very resolving low end that is just velvety smooth. The mid-range is natural, full-bodied, well-separated, and pretty well-defined. Highs are well-controlled, nothing ever gets too hot or too sibilant, and only on the very rarest occasions does it ever get too bright. And the top end has very good sparkle and texture that gives you a really good amount of detail and information in that high range. Again, very tight though, very focused. Because of all that focus, the staging on the FA-10 is kind of a middle ground of staging. It's not super, super narrow, but it's definitely not a huge sounding amplifier. It is a huge sounding amplifier in the sense that it is tremendously powerful and super impactful and very, very dynamic. But the actual sound stage is more of a middle of the road kind of sound stage. And in that middle range sound stage, you get excellent imaging that is very well defined and very precise. So there's your general sound for the FA-10. And we're going to use that as our baseline going forward, because now we're going to see how the Mentor compares. The very first thing you're going to notice, the very first change you're going to notice with the Mentor is a much wider soundstage. The Mentor is significantly more airy, more spacious, more gigantic. It has a much wider soundstage and a more natural sound signature that sounds a lot more realistic. Vocals now have extra room to breathe and they have this hyper realism about them where they feel like they're really right there in the room with you. It's extremely immersive. The low end remains very dynamic, but again, it's being it's a much wider sound, a much bigger sound. So that low end is more refined. It's given some more extra room to kind of stretch out so that it is revealing more layers and more definition and information in the low end. So the low end, while still just as impactful as the FA-10, is much more resolving and much more natural and realistic. The top end on the Mentor is not quite as sparkly and textured as it is on the FA-10. You get tremendous amount of trouble performance out of the Mentor, it's just never as bright as the FA-10. So sometimes the FA-10 just sounds more resolving, albeit sometimes it might on rare occasions get a little bit too bright. Compared to the Mentor, the FA-10 is a more intense, more intimate, and vocal forward sounding amplifier. It has more energy, more snap, and it is quicker than the Mentor. So that makes the Mentor a more smoothing and relaxed experience, but it is a much more natural listening experience. It is hyper realistic and that extra space, that extra air and staging you get out of the Mentor makes it for such a much more immersive and theatrical experience. So you could think of the FA-10 as kind of your head banging amplifier and the Mentor for true listening. And then specifically when we're talking about using the Mod House Tungsten here, the Mentor is, I, I mean, maybe the perfect match. With the Mentor, I am getting a wholly different kind of listening experience with the Mod House Tungsten. Different than the FA-10 and different than the Ferrum Stack. Now, in my first review for the Tungsten single-sided, I did mention that the Ferrum Stack was kind of the pinnacle for me. It was the end-all be-all sound system for the Mod House Tungsten. But now that the Mentor is here, things have gotten messy. Compared to the Ferrum Stack, the Mentor is an overall more intense, slightly more intense, but significantly more spacious listening experience. The ore has more control and more precision in certain areas, but the Mentor is much more musical. And overall, the Mentor actually provides a grander sense of definition and detail across the majority of your range. The ore, I think, still offers a bit more information in the high mids and the high trouble range, but everywhere else, your mid range and your base range, the Mentor is just more resolving.
And with the mentor, you get a greater sense of spaciousness, a greater sense of imaging, just a greater sense of holographic realism. True to its form, the Ferrum stack is much more technical and accurate and precise when it comes to attacks and transients. It's quicker, it's faster, and it's more precise than the Mentor, and yet the Mentor sounds more true to life. So when it comes to running the Mod House Tungsten, I'm in a weird place here because I obviously I love my FA-10. That's not going anywhere. I love what it can do. I love its intensity, especially with the Tungstens. It makes the Tungsten super crazy, fast, and intense. I still love the Ferrum stack. That is one of the most technical performing stacks I've ever heard. And I'm going to be holding onto that as well because it still does certain things for the tungsten that really nothing else can do. And the amount of manual control you get with the Ferrum stack, you can't really argue. There's nothing really out there that has that level of control. All that said, though, I have to admit that here in my test bench, the Flux Labs Acoustics Mentor is the best sounding amplifier for Modhouse Tungstens that I have so far heard. Absolutely phenomenal pairing. Okay, so the Mentor is a phenomenal amplifier. That's all well and good, but what happens when you have two of them? So how the heck do we do this? How do we connect two Mentors stacked on top of each other? Well, again, this is based on a dual mono design, so it's actually pretty easy. Within each Mentor is that sync board that we saw in the teardown section. And what that sync board allows the Mentor to do is have this master and slave relationship. And that's where the link port comes into play. Again, this kind of old school DVI looking port. For this to work, you need to have the link cable. Again, just kind of looks like a little old school DVI cable, but I wouldn't trust just going and grabbing yourself a DVI cable to do this. I highly, highly recommend that you message Ferrum about this. And if you are planning on going dual mentors anyway, they include this as long as you tell them that you plan to run your mentors monoblocked. So on the, on the cable, you have a master and a slave end. They're both marked. The master unit, the master mentor, is the one that you're gonna be doing all the actual control on, while the slave mentor is just there to mimic exactly what's happening with its master unit. So choose which mentor you want to be your slave, choose which one you want to be your master, knowing that only one of them is where you're gonna be doing any actual control. Next, we're gonna take a look again at that single three pin XLR. This is where you're gonna be connecting your balanced inputs. So we are basically splitting each mentor into its own channel. So in my setup, I have the master mentor at the top. I make the top the right channel and the bottom mentor the left channel. Going back to the front panel, we're gonna take a look at that input selection again, where we have the mono selection. So we're gonna flip both units to mono because now they're going to be operating independently with that single input XLR so that they are basically just right and left channel amplifiers. Next, we go to the outputs and rather than using the four pin balanced output, you're actually going to be using the single ended combo output with that three pin XLR. Because again, each mentor is operating basically as its own channel, its own amplifier for each channel. And to accomplish this, you're gonna need a cable like this, which is a dual three pin male XLR to a four pin female XLR. This is what allows you to take both channels, right? Both ports from each individual mentor into a single output. And then you connect your headphones via XLR to the cable. Put all that together correctly, and now you have yourself an absolutely insanely powerful headphone amplifier solution. So with two mentors, what do you get? What changes? An absolutely insane amount of power. Maybe one of the most powerful amplification solutions for headphones, not including speaker amplifiers. I told you to put a pin in the power output comparison of the Mentor and the FA-10, FA-10 having 16 watts to the Mentor's 11 something watts. Well, now that we have two of them together, that 11.2 watts per channel has now become 33.5 watts per channel at 32 ohms, and that 1.6 watts per channel at 300 ohms is now 6.4 watts. <sighs> It is insane amounts of power, more power than you'll ever need. I don't think there is a headphone on the planet that could ever actually make use of that much power.
power delivery. Oh my goodness. Significantly more power. Great. That's great. What else are you gaining? Even more soundstage. If you can believe it, <laughs> doubling up on the mentor expands the staging even more. It's like as if the mentor on its own, which was, as I said, an already amazingly staging amplifier, compared to dual mentors, a single mentor almost sounds like a solid state, while dual mentors sounds like a tube amplifier. It becomes one of the most immersive experiences I've ever heard. The amount of space and air coupled with an even more improved imaging, wider separation, more layers, more definition, more precision everywhere and in a much bigger space. It, it's, it's just so much holographic realism. It's so uncanny. It is truly amazing. Your balance performance is more tight and precise and just much better performing. Your signature becomes more natural, more true to life. You get improved speed, better attacks, better transients. It becomes this very genuine high-end tube amplifier atmosphere, but without any loss of clarity or refinement. And again, pairing dual mentors with the Mod House Tungsten is really good. <laughs> wow, that's descriptive. It is, and I know I feel like I've said this a couple times already in this video alone, but dual mentors for the Tungsten. Okay, I need to be careful with what I say here, because again, let me let me reinforce this before I say what I'm going to say. Dual mentors is overkill. I I can't recommend it because it's it's just kind of stupid. It's stupid powerful, and you, you you're just not gonna ever really benefit from it. It's just it's just overkill. It's so much overkill, and yet dual mentors with the tungsten is without a shadow of a doubt the best i've ever heard tungstens in my review for the double-sided tungsten where i talk so much about the kind of holographic realism that the double-sided tungstens provide the majority of that testing was with dual mentors and man it just brought out so much of the potential of the Mod House Tungsten, so much of the character, not just allowed it to spread and allowed it to be free, but actually amplified those characteristics, amplified what the headphones already naturally good at. It's an absolutely beautiful, freaking fantastic pairing, but I'm still not going to recommend it to you because it is overkill, total overkill. <laughs> I can't. Oh man, it's really, it's really hard for me to talk about like percentages, like how much better percentage wise is dual mentors over a single mentor. That's really hard for me to do because it's not really a linear progression. It just, it changes things. But if I were to try to use a percentage of value, I guess, out of the performance, the percentage of performance increase you're getting with dual mentors over a single mentor, I'd say maybe about 20 to 25% more performance with dual mentors than with a single mentor. So again, you do the numbers, that doesn't really, uh, it's, it's overkill. It's, it's not a huge enough improvement, I think, to maybe justify having two of these, but there's no denying the results. There's no denying that it's one of the most impressive headphone amplification solutions on the planet that I've heard. It's really phenomenal. Flux Labs, Flux Labs just hit it out of the park with the Mentor and allowing it to monoblock onto itself. It's just wild. What a wild, wild set up that I can't recommend because it's just total overkill and just too much. It's just too much. <laughs> I'm still very, very sad about the discontinuation of the FA-10. I still freaking love that amplifier, but the Mentor is a true successor. I absolutely love it. I hope that you enjoyed this. I'll be seeing you again soon.